Hello and welcome to today's episode. So today we will be changing a cold water inlet valve on an unvented cylinder. This happens to be a mega flow. Just want to say that before touching anything unvented, related to unvented, you have to be part G3 qualified, which I am. So just want to let you know that. So please homeowners don't start touching stuff and tampering with the unvented cylinder. Uh, get professional, uh, get someone who's trained uh, because this is dangerous if you get this wrong. So just wanted to put that out there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let's go. This is a Megaflow Heat Race Sadie, one of the first generation ones. So it's about 15 years old. And there is a problem with the pressure reducing valve for the inlet. So the inlet pressure reducing valve. So after 12 to 15 years of use, it's starting to leak here. And the customer is putting a bowl underneath to have to collect it. I've just emptied that. So what we're doing at the moment is we're draining down. We're draining down the hot water side. Um, and that's going outside. Because this is on the floor, this is on the floor, um, we have to open this valve. you'll then start to hear a dull thing noise and that's basically just sending water out the hose an unvented cylinder differs from a, a regular cylinder or a gravity fed cylinder um, because it has mains going to it whereas a normal uh, gravity fed cylinder has gravity water going to it an unvented cylinder has a lot of extra pressure on the outer sides of the walls so if you were to put that same pressure apply that same pressure to, uh, as an unvented cylinder to a gravity fed cylinder the cylinder uh, which is gravity fed would not be able to take the pressure and would crack and break uh, whereas a, a unvented cylinder is able to cope with those pressures. Uh, additionally, it has safety valves. So we, here we have, so this is what I, I'm opening to allow air in, to be sucked in. That was the glugging noise, what the glugging noise is made by. Uh, this is the temperature and pressure relief valve. That is a 10 bar. So this temperature relief valve here, te temperature and pressure relief valve. So it, it allows, if the temperature gets too high, um, and if the pressure in the cylinder uh, gets too high, uh, this will discharge at 10 bar and over. And here we have uh, a pressure relief valve, which is designed to discharge water uh, out of a tonne dish, and I'll show you what that is in a minute, um, at around 8 bar. This one is set for 8 bar. Some different, sit there are many different manufacturers of cylinders, uh, unvented cylinders. This one happens to be Megaflow, as I have mentioned. Um, but some cylinders uh, have slightly different pressures at which they just charge at. This uh, valve here, the cold water inlet balancing valve, uh, sets the pressure within the unvented cylinder at 3 bar. Sometimes, uh, depending on the manufacturer, it's 3.5. Uh, but this on a mega flow on this particular model it happens to be 3.5 so right what I'm going to do now because I've got an isolation valve here I'm going to undo this nut and I'm going to use this uh, as a control and by sucking that it's going to actually bring the water from this over here all the way up and out now this pipe right here is hot and that is because the hot water is draining down but the hot water is at the top so as it drains down the hot water continues 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 until you get to the bottom because what you're actually at first draining out is the is the cold water in the bottom of the cylinder so now that's that's draining down so we'll give that 10 minutes and we'll come back then so just for demonstration purposes this is what it's going to look like and I'm going to switch, switch it back on, just suck it out, just to show you. Filling the tray up. Right, 
Right, so now this is stopped, what has happened is, if I bring you round here, so what's happened is the level in the cylinder has got below this point over here. Don't know if you can see that. So there's just water in here now, and that's why it's no longer draining out uh, from down there. So that means we've almost got an empty cylinder. On to the next part, changing this thing. So this is the new kit. This happens to be made by Baxi. Uh, Baxi make other parts such as boilers uh, and all, well, all sorts of parts, PCBs and Baxi boilers. So, right, so don't need that. So first thing here, we have a tundish. dish. Now this is what, this is called a viewing window and this just allows the end user um, to see if water is discharging. Now if you see water discharging into here, <coughs> excuse me, that means that one of your safety valves uh, is letting by, uh, which means it's time to call the engineer. If you check this every so often just to make sure your safety devices are working okay, uh, that, would, that would help as well. Um, and also uh, get the, make sure the engineer checks this and checks the safety valve. So once you've had a service on your Megaflow, um, on your unvented cylinder that is, uh, get, say, ask the engineer, have you checked the safety valves? Just for the homeowner's use. <clears throat> this is the uh, three bar balancing valve. This will reduce whatever your pressure is, so say it's six bar coming in uh, at the mains. Uh, this will reduce it down for the mega flow uh, and your hot water to three bar. Uh, this is non-adjustable, this is set by the manufacturer and, and that's that. This is your safety valve. So this is the eight bar safety valve. I don't know if you can see that. Eight bar safety valve. Let's focus that camera in a bit. There we go, eight bar safety valve. Uh, your isolation valve. And the bag of nuts. So we're gonna assemble this. So I'm actually gonna show you how to assemble it, which would be a good idea. So, I don't know if you can see, this arrow pointing upwards. That means that there is a non-return valve in it. So, say if water uh, say you have a build up of pressure and it wants to go this way, back down, it can't because there's a, um, a non-return valve. So that needs to be facing upwards. Now what goes into that is the isolation valve and that is done up by a nut, so let's go and do that now. Grab the bag of bits. So I'm now going to assemble it all. I'm actually um, going to use copper olives instead of brass because brass is harder and it doesn't crush as well onto the fitting um, as copper does so that's what we're going to use I'm also using jet blue just as a paste to go around the fittings So, I'm going to loosely assemble that, and then once it's in place, we'll tighten everything up. Okay, on to the next part. So now we're going to undo this, take this out, and replace it with the new one. So, get rag, put it under there, put it down there, undo this nut, undo this nut. So this is the combination valve. So there it is, that's out. Now we have to remember again, like I said earlier, the arrow points up. So we have to get the new one in the same place. We might have to reconfigure the pipework as it's a slightly different size. Uh, these are no longer available. 
so you have to buy the, the kit that I've already shown you. Otherwise it'd be a straight for straight swap, lovely jubbly, thank you very much. Stick the money in the bank, but unfortunately that's not the case. So sometimes you have to adjust the pipe work to suit. So let's carry on. So one big difference you will notice, or you may notice, is that this one doesn't have this built in. Whereas this, <coughs> excuse me, has a little nut. Has a little nut. Come on camera, focus. This one has a little nut and that just screws on. Unfortunately, this has two nuts that you need to screw on. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut this down to allow for this to go in, which then means this pipe work over here, this pipe work here, which this used to connect to, is gonna have to be moved up. But that's not an issue, it's all part of the job. So I will bring you back when we've got that installed. So this valve is in, it's now time to put this in. So I'm gonna put that up there, grab yourself a Sharpie, and just mark Not two lines. And this section here is what I need to cut out, so I'm going to do that now. Put a little bit of paste on. Have that facing towards you so it's nice and easily accessible so before i'm going to carry on with this what i'm just going to do is if you have a look this here so this is the lowest point of the cold water so because this is sat, sat on the floor what i need to do is i need to drain i need to put a drain valve on this so i can drain the hot out so that's what i'm going to do now as you can see the isolation valve is installed the pressure reducing valve is installed and the pressure relief valve is installed and that pipe goes to the tun dish so that's all done uh, the only thing now is I need to check it uh, fill the system and check it however um, because of the leak that used to be that valve used to be over there uh, however that was moved recently by someone else but the thing is the floorboards were and are rotten uh, so we're going to see if they have uh, dried out so I need to take this cylinder all out so now I've done this work that's going to stay like that but I'm going to have to now drain the central heating down so, uh, so I'm able to remove these two pipes take the cylinder out flip it uh, flip the cylinder on its side see if I can see any cracks along the bottom of the cylinder around here there's a little bit of watermark there I don't know if you can a bit of watermark there so it might be that this cylinder has now uh, had it so to speak uh, and is leaking underneath the cylinder so that's my next uh, mission to investigate that so until then I will not be filling up uh, but after that we will pressure test it so let's have a look at this cylinder so as you can see the cylinder is now out this is where the leak occurred however because the valve the uh, pressure reducing valve was uh, here somewhere before I reckon that was the source of leak so actually I think uh, I've taken the cylinder outside and I actually think it looks fine uh, there's no damage to it on, on the underside so I actually think it was just the faulty <coughs> and old and leaking pressure reducing valve so let that dry um, well we'll put the cylinder back and it will dry around it 
uh, and we'll just monitor it. The customer will just monitor it. So, good day's job. <sighs> Almost finished, just to put it back uh, and then fill it up and ship fleets. Uh, but I've, I'm pretty confident that there will be no leaks. Um, and that's uh, that's everything done. So, so I've done all my checks. Now it's the moment of truth. Time to turn it back on. Looks good so far. <clears throat> so the boiler is now on. That's all fixed. Only thing is. Uh, this isolation valve is leaking, so we'll come back tomorrow and fix that. We'll just uh, put another quarter turn lever valve in and that will sort that problem. So that will be quick. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. And until next time, keep plumbing! <laughs>